Hello everyone, welcome back to another Minecraft Create Point 3.1 video. So the Create Point 3.1 update just dropped, and I spent the last few hours going through every single change, a lot of feature, to present them all to you guys and show you all of the different changes, updates, and additions that have been added in the latest Create update. So the first feature we're going to start with is honestly probably the coolest, but it might be putting me out of a YouTube career. <laughs> now this feature, um, basically if you hover over stuff, you no longer get the details, but you get this little hold W to ponder. Now what that does is say I hover over Crushing Wheels, I'm going to hold W and it'll show me a little animation that basically shows you how to use the Crushing Wheels. <laughs> so it's a super cool little, little infographic. Um, it's super well animated. It's this nice little 3D model you get to look at. Um, you have different options. You can identify, close, and replay. So you can identify. So you can hover over a crushing wheel. This is a shaft. This is a cog wheel. Um, you can replay to start it from the beginning. And you can turn on this comfy reading section to basically slow down the animation and give yourself more chances to read. Now, there's a lot more here. So for example, um, off to the side here gives you some more options. So targets for mechanical arms and kinetic applications. So I go ahead and click this, I'll get a huge list of all the different targets a mechanical arm can use. So crushing wheels is one of them, which is what we were just on. But we can see that we can also put stuff into basins, ejectors, depots, chutes, and et cetera. And I can go ahead and click one of these to get information on brass funnels. And then I can like kind of keep going through here, kind of figuring out all the different options that I can use in the mod. Now if I wanted to go back, I can do think back, and basically that's kind of just your go back a page, and I can basically explore all the different features, create ads with a whole lot of detail. And there are actually quite a few different options, for example we'll show the gantry, which will have multiple different scenes. So for example it's got this little simple scene, it's got a scene with a redstone signal, it's got a scene with two of these shafts, and so there's a whole lot to explore here. And honestly, if you want to know how to do something and create, this is going to be much better than <laughs> a lot of tutorials. I'm not completely discounting tutorials, as I mean, there's a lot of stuff here that it doesn't cover, but if you just want to know how to do something quick, this is going to be the way to do it. So now we're going to go over all of the new blocks added by the Create Mod. So the first one is a smart shoot. Now a smart shoot does pretty much exactly what you think it does. You can put a, you have a filter option, uh, it works just like a brass funnel or um, any other filtered item and create. You can put item in there, choose how many you're going to go in. You can also give it a red signal to stop or start the shoot. In practice, I've got a smart shoot here, I'm giving it redstone signal so it's not going to go. I've got stone and cobblestone in here, but I've got cobblestone not in the filter, I've got stone there. So we're going to flick this lever, you'll see all the stone will fall out, but the cobblestone will stay in this chest. The next block create adds is the gantry and gantry carriage. Now this thing is super cool. It's basically just a new way to move blocks in a direction. So to show you guys this in practice, basically what I have here is I've got my gantry shaft here, which is what actually controls the thing, and I have a gantry carriage here. Now when I flick the lever, you see the gantry carriage and anything attached to it is going to move with it. So for example, I wanted to like have a little platform here, I can flick this lever, and I can move this along with gantry carriage. Now it does kind of feel like there's not really too much you can do with this, but this is going to be so powerful. Um, and showing you one of the reasons is this. So if I power the gantry shaft, what will happen is it'll keep spinning, but the carriage won't move anymore the shaft on the carriage will move. So this is a way to have mobile power that can actually move up and down. And I could even like continue this stuff through like another um, lever here. I could actually continue on the shaft. There's some really powerful things you can do in terms of transferring rotational energy into different areas of your factory. Another neat thing you can do with the gantry carriage is you can actually place your shafts in multiple directions. So if I place it here, you can see like the little bands are facing this way. Now if I place it going the other direction, you can see that the bands are going the other direction. And what this does is it actually changes the direction 
that the gantry carriage will move on the shaft. So if I go ahead and reverse this, you can see they move towards each other. But if I reverse it again, they're gonna move away from each other. The next block is the sticker. Now what the sticker does is it basically works as a way to connect and disconnect, create contraptions from each other. So in action, I've got a mechanical piston, which I can move back and forth with this crank. And when I give it a redstone pulse to the sticker, you can see the little piston in there extends, connects up to the block, and now I can move that block along with the piston. And if I want to disconnect it here, I can disconnect it there, and then move my sticker back. The last, and honestly probably my favorite little thing that they added to the mod was the weighted ejector. Basically what this does, it is a catapult in the create mod. To show you this in action, I have a little weighted ejector here, which I'm going to go ahead and grab. And basically the way this works is you shift right click on the target. And then basically what you can do is you can place your weighted ejector. And it'll actually give you this little um, particle range showing you the trajectory that it's going to take and if it's good or not. So for example, if I'm facing out here, it'll turn red saying, hey, you can't place it over there. It's got to be in line with the uh, location you're going to. And obviously if I go too far away, it'll also just basically not show up or it'll show up red. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it right here. You'll see my trajectory. And when you place it, what it does is it basically uses a creative motor to kind of pull it back. And then as soon as it has an item and it's ready to fling, put an item on there, there's something on the depot, it'll fling, it'll fling the item over. Now another cool thing you do with a weighted ejector is if you grab a wrench, you can actually adjust the count of items. So if I say put 10 on here, grab myself some stone, it won't actually eject until it reaches 10 stone. So it's a cool way to kind of filter out um, an exact amount of resources. <laughs> and another cool thing it does is it'll actually fling players and entities. Now the range on this thing is actually pretty crazy. So um, in line, what you can do is you can do a 32 block basically from there to here. So 32 blocks is the maximum you can do in line and fling something all the way across. Um, now if I were to raise the ejector, I could actually go further. Because the way it works is it works um, off this trajectory line. And obviously if this is higher, we're able to go further back because it can like basically drop down. And we can actually get a little bit more distance out of this than just 32 blocks. Now the speed of the motor or the power source does not actually affect the distance. It only affects the rate which it retracts. So for example, because this is going so far, you notice it'll take forever to go all the way back to retracting. So we're going to speed this up, it'll go back much faster. Another thing you can do with the weighted ejector is you can actually link these up. <laughs> so basically we set one target to the other, you can move items either back and forth, or you can move them across a long area space if your 32 blocks isn't far enough, or you can even use them to turn like tight corners. It's a really fun way to kind of transfer items around your factory. Now the ejectors can't only be used to move items, they can actually be used to move players, and pretty efficiently at that. I've got this block all the way up there, and I hop on this ejector, I can bounce all the way up to the top. Oh, if you miss, just land back in your ejector and go all the way up. Now something I discovered with the weighted ejectors, which I think is pretty cool, obviously if you fall on them and they're powered, it'll just bounce you back up. Even in survival, you won't take any fall damage. But a really neat thing that it does is, it actually negates all fall damage, even if it's not powered. <laughs> so basically this is a really neat way to just kind of have a cheap way to negate all fall damage. And the last little thing I have here is, I mean, <laughs> there's some really cool things to do with these. You make some cool, like, Rube Goldberg machines and connect these things up and make some really neat little contraptions around your factory. So the last sort of addition added by the mod is three new food items. We have the honeyed apple, sweet roll, and chocolate glazed berries. These actually have some pretty fun recipes. Um, basically, the way you actually make these is you actually fill them with a spout. So, honey and apples to make a honeyed apple, milk and bread to make a sweet roll, and chocolate and berries to make glazed berries. And these actually really improve the quality of the food. Honeyed apples is four hunger haunches um, plus another six and a half saturation. 
sweet rolls or three hunger haunches, and then another five and a half saturation. And glazed berries are three and a half hunger with, uh, I think that's six and a half saturation. So it's a really cool way to kind of improve your food and get some really good outputs from it. So now we're gonna kind of move in from the new additions to all of the changes. Now, <laughs> there's quite a lot of changes here, so um, I'll be going relatively quick through all of them. If you want more detail, I will have the full change log linked down in the description for you guys to go check out. So the first big change, which is actually going to affect a lot of factories, is that andesite funnels no longer move items from chest to chest. Now that sucks. <laughs> and neither andesite nor brass funnels do that anymore. Um, basically that functionality has been replaced by the smart chute um, because you can place a smart chute here to give it the redstone signal to power it off and on, or you can give the brass funnel if you need the sorting capabilities or item filtering. Now the andesite funnel can still be powered with redstone to turn it off and on, uh, but the way it works now is basically you throw items in the top um, instead of pumping them in the top. So if it's closed, items don't go through. If it's open, they will. But this no longer works with a chest above it. If I put an item in here, it's not going to go through. Another change they made is they basically got rid of the full block andesite funnel. Now, no matter wh where you place it, you'll get the kind of half block um, model as it would show up on a, as if it was connected to a belt. This is the same with the andesite and the brass funnels. Now, the next addition that they added back into the mod is you can dye belts again. This is amazing. I've seen a lot of people uh, kind of mention that, hey, why can't I dye belts anymore? Where did the belt, buying, belt, <laughs> belt dyeing go? Um, this feature is added back to the pack, and it's I think it's added quite nicely. Instead of just tinting them a different color, you get these neat little stripes. And if you ever wanted to undye a belt, what you can do is you can either take a water bucket or a water, bo water bottle, and you just right-click on the belt to undye it. Pretty neat. The next change is that deployers now hold um, whatever block they mine in their inventory. So go ahead and activate this deployer. It'll mine this cobblestone. And what'll happen is, once it's fully mined, it'll go into the deployer's inventory. So if I break the deployer, I'll get the cobblestone. So now what you can essentially do is pump items out of a deployer instead of having to have them fall on the ground and collecting them by a hoppers or funnels or whatever. The next feature I added, which completely makes my B video <laughs> obsolete, is you can now directly harvest honey and honeycomb from beehives using deployers. So now instead of having to use them and then the honey bottles and honeycombs fly all over the place, you can directly harvest them from your bee nests or bee hives and basically pump them directly into your storage system. Another very, very cool thing is you can actually pump honey out of bee hives and bee nests using the create pumps and create pipes. The next feature, which is gonna be amazing for parkour maps is slime blocks are now actually bouncy on create contraptions and ice is now slippery. <laughs> so that's a minor little change, but the little changes like this just really make the whole mod feel like it's working so much smoother and it'll make some really neat parkour challenges in the future. The next feature is crushing wheels now function horizontally. So basically what you can do is you can just pump items in through a belt through the back of crushing wheels It'll crush them up and it'll spit out all of the ore. So now that it's done, you see our crushed iron and extra little bonus cobblestone will all be pumped out through this mechanical belt. Now this next update is something that I am very, 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 very excited to play around with. And I think very cool things are to come from this. Deployers can now play schematics. <laughs> Now, it may not sound cool, and it, honestly, it really isn't when the schematic cannon exists, but what you can do is you can place a schematic in the filter slot in a deployer, and then if I were to place a schematic down and run the deployer with a chest full of the items, or the blocks, I should say, what it'll do is it'll actually place the blocks in the correct order matching the schematic. So essentially you can make a 3D printer in the create mod using schematics and deployers, which is very, very, very cool. And I'm definitely going to be playing around with this in the future and making some very fun things. Now, I'm not going to test it right now because deployers are currently broken in this release of the mod. So 
take my word for it. It will work. It does work. Um, but I'm just not able to show it off in this video. So the next update is there have been some model and texture changes. Firstly, the engineering goggles got a little bit of an upgrade. Looks like the actual model is the same as they were before, but the texture for the item has changed. I, I think the new one looks a lot nicer than the old one. The funnels, both andesite and brass, have both changed, so they look a bit different, as well as they'll always be in the kind of smaller half block form. Rotational speed controller has changed its texture. Gear shifts and clutches both got a little bit of a texture upgrade. And then redstone contacts got a very nice texture update. Um, got like a little button where the actual contact is. And I think these look really nice now. I think this was a really good improvement. A really cool update to the engineering goggles is that now you can actually see the fluid contents of both basins and tanks. So in this basin, I can see that we got a thousand millibuckets of water and honey. In this tank, we have 5,000 millibuckets of water out of 1,600 is our total capacity. And in this tank, you can see we've got 1,600 millibuckets of honey with a total of 96,000 96, um, millibuckets uh, total capacity. And another thing added is that comparators now actually work with fluid tanks. So you can see this one is a little under half full, and we're giving up five redstone signal. This one is about a third full. We're giving off a redstone signal of three. So you'd use this to basically monitor the amount of fluid you have in a tank. So if you wanted to monitor if, how full your tank is, you can actually use redstone comparators to now monitor that. Basically turn off system if they're full or void some fluid if they are. But yeah, really cool little, really cool little change. Now one update that I'm not too fond of, I think I'm still just need to get used to it, but they basically overhauled the way it looks when you place blocks and create. Now what I do really like is I like the shadow, but what I don't like is the little arrow kind of showing you what direction they're being placed. I don't know. It's, I, I just, I don't, I don't like it. I liked the old line you got before. And well, I think this is a cool way to do it. And I definitely get that it feels more Minecrafty. Um, I did like the, the old way better. Um, for cogs, I think I like it a lot, but for shafts, not necessarily as much, and you can actually see the little ghost of large cogs when you do this, as well as the little arrow, but yeah, for cogs I like it, for shafts, not as much. So the next change is that mechanical arms can now interface with composters. Uh, oh, there it goes, <laughs> slowly but surely. So you see it'll grab some leaves, turn around, put it in the composter, and then once this is fully composted, um, we can just grab some more leaves to speed this up. So this is done. This other arm, what it'll do is it will, whoops, <laughs> I already clicked it. But anyway, it would grab the bone meal out of there and place it onto here. So now you can actually very easily automate the composter. So now you don't have to throw away all of your extra saplings from your <laughs> giant tree farm. Another change is that mechanical arms will now basically pause items on belts. So if you have like a sorting system where a mechanical arm is taking items off a belt, what it'll do is when it's actually going to grab an item, it'll actually pause the belt. So that way it'll never, the belt will never be too fast where it can't actually get to the item in time. And it'll basically miss the item. So you can see it's going to grab the item and pauses the whole belt while it waits to grab the item. The next change is that basins with the little offshot suits now actually deposit items that are completing the basin directly onto unpowered mechanical belts. A really small but pretty cool change is that refined radiance, when thrown, now will actually float. It actually floats for quite a while. It's pretty, pretty fun. Plows now actually destroy snow blocks. However, they will only destroy the one high snow piles. If it's too high or more, it will not. Chassis can now be placed vertically as well as horizontally, allowing you to do some pretty neat little things with chassis and be able to make some a lot more interesting shapes with them and connect your contraptions up a lot easier. They fixed how honey displays on depots. It's now vertical versus laying down. They added two new attributes to the attribute filter. First one is, is that the is died filter. So you can see that if a block was died, the second is the enchant level. So you can see that this is a sword that was enchanted at level 30. 
is enchanted at max level. The next really small little change they made is that moving attractions now both give footstep noises as well as show particles. Just a, a neat little thing to kind of make the whole mod a little more atmospheric. Okay, crafters can now accept inputs from the front of the crafter. Large cogwheels can no longer be placed right next to a millstone. Things will be placed diagonally, but they can no longer be placed here, clipping into the block. Sponges can now be used to empty the contents of a basin. The sequential gear shift had a new instruction added, which is a way to redstone pulse. So it'll wait until a redstone pulse gets given to it, and then it'll go on to the next instruction. While wearing the engineering goggles, you can now see the contents of a chute. So you can see that this chute is full of enchanting tables. We're going to pull something out of here, throw a new item in. See at the top here, we have a brass casing in there. Mechanical pistons now can be pulled from the piston head or piston pulls by another create contraption. Now, if you've ever tried to make a sorting system, this will be an awesome change for you. Mechanical arms no longer go into filter slots. So if you're trying to select a large area of brass funnels, you can no longer accidentally filter them and <laughs> wreck your system. This is an awesome change. Custom cogwheels and new contraption types can now be easily added with add-ons. So you can see a lot more stuff like this, which was made by Bees Please, added in the future by the Create community. Now last, but certainly not least, hand cranks can actually be manipulated while holding an item or block now. This is amazing. So what do you guys think about all the new changes? I'd love to hear your comments down below about all the different things that you like and dislike or things you're excited to play with. And <laughs> I know I'm really excited for most of these features and definitely going to be making some more content on all of the new updates. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. And anyways, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.